Welcome, everybody, to Whiskeys for Drinking, Waters for Fighting. And we're talking about how to bring order out of the water chaos. And we're here with uh, myself. John Robitaille is coming to us with from Casper, Wyoming. John, I want to introduce yourself real quick, just so everybody gets to know you. Sure. Uh, I'm John Robitaille. I'm the CEO of Encore Green and director of the Carbon Asset Network. Right. And we also got Darren Smith, who is, uh, if you're watching us on video, maybe you're just on, on audio, but if you're watching us on video, Darren has uh, just got his name displaying because he's having some technical issue, but we do get to hear his uh, just melodious voice. So uh, Darren, t t say hello to us. Hello, my name is Darren Smith. I'm uh, Encore Green Environmental's Chief Technology Officer and also the Director of ESG, where we help uh, corporations improve their corporate responsibility. Yeah, great. Also got Marvin Nash, who's, uh, if you're on video, if you're watching us on video, you'll see he's about to be attacked by a bull from his uh, background is, is from his uh, rodeo days. So uh, Marvin, tell us a little bit about you. You bet, Jeff. I'm a, a retired PRCA professional rodeo clown, spent uh, about 30 years in the industry as well as doing uh, educational programs across the United States and retired and went to work for EOG in the energy industry and several trucking companies and worked in logistics. And uh, my wife and I are the co-founders of Encore Green. And from Encore Green has grown uh, the Carbon Asset Network, the Synergy for Ecological Solutions, uh, water technology development, and, and uh, kind of all things water. Great. We are an agriculture company uh, that, that deals in uh, all things water. Fabulous. And I'm Jeff Holder, and I am the ringleader of this group here, and I'll be uh, just trying to pull us all together as we go through trying to explore about water. I'm the COO of Encore Green Environmental, and I'm the volunteer director of our sponsor, which is the nonprofit Synergy for Ecological Solutions. So the topic on the table for today, what we're going to kick around a little bit here is, of course, we are f talking about how water is for fighting. And last time we kind of talked a little bit about, like historically, we know that, right? That the old uh, B Western movies, they're, they're fighting over the rights to the water for one ranch over another or something like that. But Marvin, what do you think? Are, are we still fighting over water in sort of the same ways? And what does that look like these days? You know, our, our company portfolio will tell you that, yes, there, there is still a, a large conversation, uh, uh, an exasperated conversation among many different entities uh, from the environmental side to the corporate side to the industrial side. And, and I, I'm just going to kind of throw out the question to John and, and Darren and, and you, Jeff, but to John and Darren, I don't care which one starts first, but for, for me, after spending this time period in this arena of, of water, you know, Elon Musk has figured out how to get us to the moon and back with non-governmental intervention. Uh, Bezos is one of the richest men in the world. Bill Gates now has written a book telling us how to be climate savvy and, and those kind of things. And, and, and I daily, you know, in 18 months, we came up with a vaccine for COVID, which was a, a real tragedy and, and has changed the world as we know it. Why are we still fighting about water? What what is the what is the phenomena? Uh, in the last uh, podcast, I was able to advance my education thanks to Darren Smith and learn that water is a compound. So, what what's the mystery of this compound, guys? What why why is it so complex? What are, what are we thinking here? And uh, John or Darren, I'll let either one of y'all take it. Well, I'll, I'll start, but I'm going to let Darren get into the technical issues of things. Um, really, I, I think we have to look at what is the demand for clean water. Right now, uh, the, the, the technologies we have, uh, the processes we use, uh, you know, we have uh, big plants in our cities. Uh, that's doing that's doing fine for 
for our, uh, our big population bases. Uh, but when we think about recycling that water for somebody else, for some other purpose, the demand is just starting to come. And I think that demand is just starting to come mostly because of uh, we're, we're seeing uh, the, the public, the, the, uh, the shareholders, uh, the, the, uh, perhaps the environmental groups, uh, we're, we're seeing a, a bigger discussion about repurposing water rather than uh, we just, we inject it into a, an underground reservoir uh, it, as it comes out of a well. Uh, those, are, those are standard practices. Uh, those are things that have happened for many years. Uh, but, but I think now the time really is uh, starting to, to turn the tide of, rather than putting this water down hole, rather than putting this water in a, in a, in a oh, what's the damn, what are the pits? Uh, rather disposal than ponds. Ponds. Disposal it, ponds. Rather than putting the water in, in uh, evaporation ponds, uh, the, the, the need, the desire for repurposing this water is really starting to come to the forefront. And, uh, and I, think, I think like many things, uh, the need and the desire will, will drive uh, technology, but uh, to really get into the technical things, uh, that's Darren's bailiwick, and, and I'll, I'll throw it to Darren. Thanks, John. My, my comments on this would be that, you know, not all water is created equal, and, uh, you know, the water that uh, we're used to seeing be recycled at wastewater treatment plants, it's, it's basically fresh water, but it's contaminated with uh, organics and, and, and frankly, bacteria does all the work. And then that's, uh, that's how it's converted back into, a, into fresh water. But uh, when we're talking about the, you know, the, the perception around all the wasted oil and gas water, the challenge with that water is, is that it's, uh, it has salts in it. And, uh, and so the removal of salts in a process known as desalination is more complicated. And I think the reason why we still have chaos, frankly, around produced water and why it's not being reused is the, is really comes down to economics. Uh, you know, oil and gas companies are going to choose the most economic option for water management. And that, that oftentimes leads us to deep well disposal or, or evaporation pits like John mentioned, but, but, but the tide is changing now. Um, Unfortunately, in the industry, the industry was making great strides in desalination technology uh, roughly 20 years ago when, when the practice of hydraulic fracturing was getting so much criticism around its water use. Companies were investing in technologies to uh, reduce the demand on fresh water by recycling their own water. Uh, and there was a perception that really clean fresh, fresh water, uh, desalinated uh, water was needed for hydraulic fracturing. But then uh, quickly it was learned that maybe uh, salty water could be used as long as the suspended material was taken out of it. So, so there hadn't been much advancement in desalination technology for many years. But, uh, but interestingly enough, the, uh, the old method of distilling and capturing the heat from the distillation process still uh, is the most energy efficient. And, uh, and now, uh, as the cost of disposal is going up because of uh, constrained uh, capacity and disposal wells, things like seismicity, uh, problems uh, with contamination from evaporation pits, those sorts of things, those are driving costs up. And now, now we're seeing desalination uh, becoming cost, uh, cost effective, uh, or at least cost competitive. Uh, and so I, I would expect that we're going to quickly see um, better things done with this water rather than uh, uh, putting it away in deep geology gone forever. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, before, before you jump in there, let, let me ask you a question. In our last podcast, you made the comment that in, in California, your, your water economics is if there's a drought, you pay more for your water. I live in the south. Yeah. 
yeah, r- relatively speaking, are, are there, th- does anybody offer a solution mm-hmm. to your drought problem? Or do you just know that if it gets b- above 100 and stays that way for 30 days, it's going to cost you more to get a drink of water? Pretty much the latter. We don't hear, I don't hear much in t- terms of what alt- what, uh, what's alternative. There's talk a lot of desalination. Uh, Los Angeles is, uh, oh, just a few miles from one of the largest bodies of water on the planet, right? But of course, it, it's salt water. And so there have been, I think for the down in San Diego, I remember reading about some experimentation being done to try to get, the, get, that, get salt out of the water and stuff like that. But it's never, for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, it's never really been attempted on a major scale. And there really isn't, you either got to clean up the water, I mean, get the, the salt out of the water that's right next to us, or we got to bring it in from somewhere. There really isn't, from my understanding, there's not a lot of water underneath our feet. Uh, my brother's an agronomist in Georgia, and that's where I'm from. And all of the farms there, well, they don't have a water problem for when they it rains, right? The second thing is all their farms, they just drill a water well and put in a pump and they irrigate their water. It's right there. It's very sandy type of soil and, and it's an easy, easy thing. But here in California, here in the West, there's, there's just not a lot of water underneath our feet. So you can't get it that way. We're, we're sitting right next to a whole bunch of water, but it's got, but it's salt water. Uh, so it's going to have to come in from somewhere. And so the most the closest places are where we're getting it from now. So I don't really hear a lot about conversations. I hope that there are people thinking about it, but you know, we got terrible problems in central California. The, the farmers and ranchers there, it's called the salad bowl of the, of the nation, right? Cause that's where we get all of our lettuce and a lot of vegetables and a lot of fruits. And man, they, 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 they suffer. You drive up the grapevine and uh, you see all sorts of just, it's just, dry dead people are trying to trying to farm in there so yeah i don't hear a lot about another solution so uh just a brief history lesson on you know elmwood mead came to wyoming as the state engineer they, they say he was so young looking when he got off the train that the governor said well who hired this kid you know because but but his job was to make chaos out of what was going on, but, you know, the, the great showman, Buffalo Bill, he looked at all of the snow and the snowpack, and, and his goal was to let's, let's repurpose that water uh, from just melting off and, and, you know, running down the rivers and, uh, you know, going someplace else, and, and let's make chaos out of that, and it, it actually became a very large government operation that actually failed miserably and uh, what saved the whole thing was the fact that they had the ability to turn water into electricity uh you know back to to john and and darren in whichever order y'all want to go but 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 i guess my question gets to be we don't need water for electricity as much anymore but with all of the brain power that were out there, I, I keep stumbling back on this. Is it just not economical enough to figure out how to repurpose water yet? Or have we just not gone through a tough enough drought situation, you know, like some of our children and kids in Africa and other, you know, other places around the world that have no water or are we just, are we just water spoiled? So uh, John and, and, and Darren, what help me find an answer? Yeah, well, I mean, after hearing what Jeff said about uh, the situation in, in Los Angeles, sitting beside the Pacific Ocean, it well, it's it's there, there are technologies to uh, to convert that uh, marine water into drinkable water. It, uh, the Middle East and Saudi Arabia has been doing it forever, but but uh, it is a matter of economics. Uh, because I think the, the water bill, even under drought situations, uh, Jeff, is, uh, if you were getting your water from a desal plant uh, on the coast, uh, your, your bill is going to be one heck of a lot higher than what you've experienced in the worst of times, I suspect. So, so it's, a mat- it's a matter of economics. And, and honestly, the pain point 
probably isn't there as long as uh, Colorado and uh, Wyoming and all these uh, headwater states still deliver water to where the politics is the squeakiest. And, uh, and until, and until um, these Western states maybe start withholding more of their water to alleviate their own drought problems, uh, I don't think uh, the people in California are going to invest in the technology to, uh, to save themselves, honestly. Um, well, and also, you know, there's a lot of history around, there's a lot of history around uh, the fact that uh, California has, has elected not to even build reservoirs to capture their own snow melt uh, for, for, uh, for concerns around uh, endangered species and water systems and things like that. So, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pain and it's, a, it's, it's all about economics, I'm afraid. You know, I, I, I question too, um, getting back to the demand side of things, um, if you go east, it's it's always fascinated me. Every time I go east, I I, I ask, where are the sprinkler heads uh, in everybody's yard? Well, they don't have them because they don't need them. Uh, their grass stays green because it, it rains all the time. Uh, out here in the West, we have huge irrigation systems. Uh, every house has one. Uh, every golf course has them. Uh, you know, it's, but, but the population differences really, I think, help with this, this demand issue. Uh, Wyoming has 500,000 people in it as a state. Uh, there's, there's towns just to our south that have more than that. Uh, so I think as, as more people perhaps populate the West, uh, as, we, as we see this demand really rise, uh, I think you'll see changes in technology perhaps. Uh, what that is, I have no idea. But perhaps there'd be some technology changes or um, uh, changes in, in the cost of energy to to uh, treat this water in a way that would make it better. Um, I'm not sure, but, but I can tell you that, that this company is forward looking enough to recognize this and, and really be on the forefront of repurposing water that is available to us as it comes out of an oil well and, and Believe me, oil is, has been in my blood for three generations. It's the most important thing we got going, but we should be using that water. We should be putting it to a use that benefits us all. And, and I, I frankly think that uh, the time is now to begin that process instead of later. Yeah, good, good word. Good word. If you want to follow up on what John was talking about, you can go to EncoreGreenEnvironmental.com. The uh, URL is on your screen. Or you can also check out our sponsor, Synergy for Ecological Solutions.org, also on your screen. And what we're looking to do with, with Synergy is to increase soil health. When you increase soil health, you make a better air, you get better air quality. And one of the best ways that you can increase soil health, of course, is through water. It's not the only way, but it's a great way. Well, that's, that's it for this episode. We appreciate everyone joining us. Thanks to John, Darren, and Marvin. Until next time, we'll see you, you, see you then. <laughs>